I've had a conversation with the channel All Visuals For You, and we decided to work together to make a kind of a fun series about modeling and using Blender. And so today I want to make a bowl, and then we'll use Blender to run a physics simulation to render fruit falling into the bowl, because I made a video of a FreeCAD banana before, and All Visuals For You has made a pear. So let's work on a bowl, and then we can put all that stuff into a Blender and run a simulation on physics. So in this video, let's make something like this. I'm going to start by making a new part here. And I'm going to use uh, the, the parametric equations macro. If you don't have it, you go Tools, Add-on Manager. We'll click on Macros over here. And then I have installed the 3D parametric curves. If you do not have this on your add-on manager, I have a video about that. So um, you can fix your add-on manager, or at least install things from it, uh, from the video that I have made. Uh, the easiest thing to do is actually use the development version of FreeCAD, version 019. And they have the add-on manager fixed in this uh, version that I'm using. So we're going to go to Macro, Macros. 3D parametric curve and execute. Since I'm running Linux, I have the luxury of specifying that this window is always on top, to which I'll put over here. So we have some default equations, and if I click on create curve, uh, then we get an idea of what it looks like. I also have to refresh my screen, right? So these parameters generate this equation, and that's kind of a cool pattern for a bowl. I'm going to delete this. And let's change a few parameters. We're going to change this to 10. That means we have 10 waves, so to speak. And uh, let's change this to something like 5. That will be the size. Uh, I'm going to change this to B-spline. Right Now as we create a curve, uh, we have a nice smooth curve with 10 points, if you will. And then let's make this 4.5 right? and then create curve. I'll hit rebuild and now we have a thinner one. Now notice we do not have uh, perhaps a uniform wall thickness in this. Uh, so that could be a, a complicating factor. And there's one other mistake that I made. If you notice, these are not closed points. So we'll have to address that as well. What I'll do, in fact, I'll just uh, delete these two things. I'll leave this in the edit so that you know what to look out for if there's any potential issues. We're going to check this close curve box. We're going to change this to 5, create curve, and then 4.5, create curve, and then we're going to rebuild, and then those are our curves, and now they're closed. That's what we want. Next, how about we change our Z value to something like 2? We're going to leave this at 10. How about we make this something like 6? and create curve. We'll rebuild. As you can see, we're kind of wireframing what we're doing. Now, this looks like totally not high enough, so let's get rid of that and make this something like 25. That's more like a bowl. <laughs> and this time we'll go a bit bigger, right? We're going to say 6.5, create curve. We'll rebuild, and there we have a nice profile. Let's do the same thing. Now this time let's say 100. And we'll say this is going to be 13. We'll create a curve. Right, so this is a little bit different because our bowl is going outwards. It's going to have a different concavity than the one I showed you, but I think that that's actually going to be an improvement. Let's make this 12.5. Create curve and rebuild, right? Now is the fun part. Let's head on over to the part workbench. And from the part workbench, we're going to choose, how about loft? And we're, we'll do an outer loft first. So I choose the outer profile here, and then the outer profile here, and the outer profile here. Uh, we'll check create solid. 
And there's our loft. That's looking really good, actually. And let's see, maybe instead of having to rebuild this bottom part of the bowl, I can simply alter the equations for this right here, right? So let's say that our Z value to try to get a constant thickness will be 0.5. And instead of 12.5, we're going to say 4.5. And everything else ought to be the same, so I'm going to create a curve. We'll close, I'll hide my body, and now allow me to hit my rebuild. Notice that comes a little bit higher than the original one, right? We just have a little offset, so I can get rid of that. And that way I'll have a bottom surface of my bowl. So let's use that. Come here, we're going to say utility to loft again. I know that uh, the very last B spline I made is this guy. Then we'll choose our next internal surface, or internal wire B spline. Um, we'll choose our next one there. And then I'll say OK. Except I forgot to click the uh, Create Solid button. So as this is generated, I'll highlight my loft, make sure that solid is set to true, and rebuild. There, so now we have a solid, and I'll show my other loft here. So I'm going to highlight my loft from the tree, and then I'm going to hold Control and highlight loft 001. And we're going to just do a little cut here, right? Make a cut of two shapes. I have a bowl. I'll use my space bar and toggle the visibility of that spline. So that should be a reasonable bowl to uh, be able to use for a uh, physics simulation in Blender. How about I save this and I'll now open up Blender. So the first thing I do when I get to Blender, I'll delete my cube. And let's go through some of the properties of like kind of the physics that you see in Blender. Uh, we'll want to import an STL file. So here I've imported a pair. It's huge. There's a few options in dealing with uh, this kind of thing. And uh, don't do what I'm about to do because I just, I'm doing this so that I can demonstrate the effects of doing it. I'm going to hit the S key and scale it down, which there's not a lot wrong with scaling something because I, that's the first thing I do when I import something all the time is scale. But uh, I want to show what scaling can do for a physics simulation because I've scaled this, you know, really small. So I've got my pair. How about I shift A? In fact, if, why don't I just uh, show my keyboard monitor so you can see the hotkeys that I use. And I'll move it up here. So take a look at that. If you need to see my hotkeys, uh, I'm gonna shift A and Blender. There we go. We're going to create a plane and scale the plane up. And then how about I make a import my bowl? So we'll grab the STL version of that bowl that we just made. I'm going to say bowl video version. All right, and I'm going to scale this down. Again, don't bother scaling it right now on your end. We're going to move this, maybe make this bowl a bit bigger as well. I can, of course, split my screen in Blender. We're going to do uh, numpad zero to get our camera view. And let's just move that up to see what our camera is looking at. Right, and so Here's my animation timeline, and if I click the play button, nothing happens. And we want our uh, fruit to fall into the bowl and possibly, in fact, probably get bruised. So if we want that to happen, 
I need to apply physics, and there's this button right over here if I hover over it called physics properties. When I click on that, I'm going to say um, this is a rigid body part. And uh, so this is an active type. We're going to leave it as one kilogram. Now if I play it, I can see that it falls according to gravity. That's exactly what I want. So this bowl, I also need it to be a rigid body, so it actually is part of the animation. I'm also going to call it a rigid body. But when I play this, both the ball and the pear fall, and we would prefer for that not to happen. So for this bowl, we're going to say that this is a passive body. And look at that. The pear kind of falls onto the bowl, but not into the bowl. And the reason for that is FreeCAD is approximating sort of a, a mesh around this bowl. This is called convex hull. And we can say collisions are convex hull down here. This is a very computationally efficient uh, way of doing things and usually doesn't need to be changed. But as you can see, we're not getting a very realistic amount <laughs> of interaction here. So I'm going to take my bowl, which is currently highlighted, and make it down to mesh. And these are the options. You can say, I want a box to go around my bowl and just act like the bowl is box shaped or a spherical or cylinder, all these things, but I care about the mesh, and that uses the bowl itself as a uh, as the collision parameters. So if I play this again, you can see that's a little bit more realistic. Um, so when we set these physics properties, the reason that mesh is not the default is because it takes a whole bunch of computational power to actually um, estimate this with the mesh. So I'm actually going to leave the pair as convex hull. So it's not that exciting to have the pair drop right down. Uh, and it's because all visuals for you did such a great job with the pair. And actually, uh, let's see, there we go. Panning in Blender is a little bit different than panning in FreeCAD. It actually got some, uh, some of the concavity perfect on the bottom of that pair. So to make it a little bit more exciting, what if I tilted the pair at an angle like this? And of course, using this control on the left. Okay, I also probably want to add in another pair. And since not all fruit comes in the same size, I'm not really worried about scaling it. I'm just going to make that look a little bit more, you know, naturally oriented. And then move this guy maybe a pinch higher. I'm going to make sure they're not overlapping here. And actually, I can work off this screen even better. And then maybe I'll import my banana. So we'll uh, scale the banana. And we'll give the banana a bit of a rotation here. That's not too bad. So we'll try these pieces of fruit. Now I need to also make sure that I have a rigid body sitting on my banana and my pear. So all of these are rigid bodies now. Let's see what happens if I play. Let's actually uh, See if we can get some of these materials sorted out here. Of course, we'll uh, add a material for the bowl. Um, I've already covered um, going through this procedure in other videos, so watch those videos if you have questions. But I'm assuming that uh, this playlist uh, that I've already made with all visuals for you will be sufficient. We're going to go to a metallic setting of 1. We'll turn the roughness down a little bit. We're going to say new here, 
base color should be yellow. And of course I can preview in my window here if I just uh, bring this over and select my viewing option to be a rendered view. All right, so you can see my metallic bowl and my yellow banana. Now my pear, let's just give this a base color. We'll make this kind of a green pear. And then we'll make this pair kind of a brownish pair. All right, so we have nice variety of fruit. We'll adjust our lighting here, something like that. Now, if I hit the play button, which this will take a lot of computation, so we're going to have to make a commitment to let this thing do its thing and compute. We'll see what happens. So if I play this animation, we're getting some really weird physics, right? That's not right. And this puzzled me for quite a long time, why these things are acting funny. And the answer is actually pretty simple. I scaled these things too small. <laughs> so that's why I said do not scale, uh, so I can show you the problem that I had when I was working on this video. Instead, um, in fact, I think we're stuck trying to compute something, so I'll just restart Blender. All right, so what I'm going to do is... <laughs> I know I've put some work into uh, the appearance and everything, but I'm going to delete all this stuff. And we're going to re-import everything. And this time I will not scale stuff, right? So I'm going to import my bowl. And look at that, right? The bowl is huge. So I'll highlight my camera. And we're going to move the camera to a more realistic place. Now we'll notice some graphical problems, right? We're really not picking up the bowl anymore. This is common. And to address this, we will uh, come down here to this camera icon, clip start and clip end, let's say something like 10,000. And what do you know, it shows up. So change your clipping to deal with, uh, you know, the different scale. Now highlighting my camera again, I can try to get this to <laughs> look at a reasonable view of our bowl here. That's looking a little bit better. Alright, I'll highlight my plane and scale it just so it looks like the bowl is sitting on something. Now, import and I'll import um, a pair. And that pair is really a good size. Really nice work on the part of all visuals for you on that. Now let's import another pair. And import a banana. I'll shrink that just a hair. All right, there's my random arrangement of fruit that I'll have fall in. And of course, I'll reassign physics properties as a rigid body, rigid body, rigid body, rigid body that we will make passive. Now this is looking at convex hole. So as you can tell, we're getting really strange uh, physics on this once more. 
And one thing that might help, I'll space this out just a little bit higher. Right, and then we'll move this back to the beginning and take my bowl and we're going to make this mesh. And that's a pretty complicated shape to try to approximate with convex hole. But you can probably get away with it with the actual fruit. If I play this again, All right, it looks like I'm getting a little bit extra play in here. So I'm gonna be upping the mass of these probably to 50 kilograms each. And I think that'll help out with the uh, excessive uh, movement in there at the end. So I've ended up adding mass to the pears and banana. We have 50 kilograms now. That's of course not a realistic weight, but we are out of scale. Uh, to compensate for the mesh. So, I play that. It's not quite at the physics that I want, but I think it's close enough for my purposes. They bounce around in there just a little bit more. Um, I think that's going to be good. So let's go through adding some appearances, right? We'll uh, come in here and add an edge split modifier. And that's for the purpose that when I make this object shade smooth, um, the edges are not distorted. I'll do that for everything in here. Edge split, edge split, and edge split. And then shade smooth. Okay, we can add a metallic appearance. Come down here, add a new material, and metallic all the way up. I'll bring down the uh, roughness so that's a little bit more mirror-like. I think that should make the render a bit more interesting. From here we'll add a new material, but I'll just care about the color for now. We'll have uh, maybe a greenish pair here, and then maybe a little bit more brown pair here. I can, of course, uh, preview the colors <laughs> here in my viewport. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too dark of a, of a color. I'll lighten it up just a hair. We'll make our banana yellow. We could do like a green one, depending on how much ripeness that you want. But that should be fine. We'll come down here and go to shading instead of scripting. There we go. And I'll add a new material on the plane that I just selected. I have to back this out so I can see it a little bit more clearly. Uh, Shift A to add more stuff. We're going to say add in an image texture. And we'll connect that to our base color. And then I'm going to open an image of wood to put onto my plane. Okay, so I selected a color of uh, wooden planks. There we go, just loaded. So we've got a little bit of a base to work with now. We'll go on back to layout. Um, that doesn't look too bad. I need to change my rendering engine though. We're going to go from EV to Cycles. And cycles um, gives that appearance that I really like. Now I'll highlight my light and let's move that around to see if we can make it a little bit more full of light. <laughs> I'll come over here and uh, we'll make this have a large radius, right? Maybe one, me one meter is too large. But we'll see. Um, we'll give it a lot more wattage. And that is not looking too bad. I won't worry about doing a background now. In fact, I'll go to my film 
and uh, we'll clip that transparent. Right, and then let's try doing a final render. You can see I put the uh, the wrong uh, version of my bowl in there, but I think this will be just fine. So for a render, let's try 500 passes. We'll do that at nineteen twenty by ten eighty. We're gonna do about two hundred fifty frames. We're gonna set our output instead as a FF MPEG. And of course I don't want the temporary directory. So I'll choose a directory. And now we're gonna say render render animation. and this will take a very long time. So I'm gonna let this run overnight and we'll take a look at the result tomorrow.